Welcome to Play Branson, the show where you get to know Branson's entertainers better. I'm your host, Chris Meyer, and today's episode is brought to you by iBranson.com, where you can find lots of information about Branson shows and attractions. So if you're looking for the latest show schedules, go to iBranson.com. On today's show, we have Kristen Dosto, a featured dancer at the King's Castle Theater. First time she's been on the show, so I'm looking forward to having her on the show. Did you know that the new Play Branson episodes drop on Monday and air each night at 8 p.m. on the Vacation Channel. You can also find us on social media, on Facebook or our YouTube channel. Be sure to check us out there or our website at playbranson.com. If you're on vacation looking for dining information, be sure to pick up the Flavor of Branson Dining Guide. It lists virtually every restaurant in the area and it has numerous coupons for Branson restaurants. You can find it in most hotel lobbies and it's free. This is a great way for you to know all about Branson's restaurants. I want to give a quick shout out to Wayne Massengill and Melody Hart over at Wrangler Star Studded Honky Tonk on Highway 165 next to the Branson Famous Theater. They've got that open Wednesday through Saturday, 8 p.m. to midnight. If you want to see some great country music, go over there. Wayne's been on, and Melody have both been on previous shows, and so we're excited about their new venture out there. We'll be right back with Kristen Dosto on Play Branson. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. And on today's show, for the first time, we have Kristen Dasto with King's Castle. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So there's lots of shows over there and you're in all of them. And we're going to talk about those shows in the next segment. But like you have an incredible history here. <laughs> and so tell people like your journey in the entertainment business and dancing and all the things you do. Yeah. So um, I'll start from the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Um, I followed my sister's footsteps when I started dancing. Um, she was in all the dance studios. I was originally born in um, Plano, Texas, and we grew up in Frisco. And I saw her in the dance studios, and I wanted to be in there so bad that I would go in at night when we'd be at home, and I would put my sister's leotards on and like run to my mom at three in the morning. Like that would be a good time to do it. Put tap yeah. shoes on and be like, I want to dance too. Um, and so the studio owner saw that like I had a passion for it and I really wanted to do it. And she would let me in the last 10 minutes of class every single day and that just made it worse. Um, so you were so really, you're, you're really young. I was young. like one and a half and you had oh to be two gosh. years old to start. And so it kept getting worse and worse with me wanting to be in there, just like really, really, really wanting to be in there. And um, the studio owner finally said, okay, if you can get her potty trained, then I'll let her start early. <laughs> It's the fastest time I've ever learned anything is what my mom said. So I was potty trained in three weeks and oh ready to go. Gosh. Um, started to dance at one and a half and been going ever since. Yeah. So yeah. kind of take us along that journey. So um, I danced with Machinist Dance Academy until I was about five. And then we, my family moved to the Mississippi area. And that kind of gave a change of, do you want to keep continuing dance or do you want to try something different? My sister went to soccer, so I said, nope, not about dirt, not that. <laughs> um, so I chose gymnastics and that was a nice little turn, got a different realm of flexibility and tricks and all of the fun stuff with that and competed with that. Um, got onto the tops team, which is training for the Olympics, was geared up to- Okay, okay, let's just let's just stop there for a second, <laughs> folks. She said that really quickly, but training for the Olympics, that means she was good. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes, um, 2014 would have been the year that I could have uh, progressed to that. Um, was Mississippi State champion at the age of five with all of that, like gymnastics was a huge world for me and wow. didn't think that I would go back to dance ever. 
Um, my family had their own photography business, so we traveled a lot growing up. I was also homeschooled my whole life, so I was able to be involved in a lot of mm -hmm. curricular activities and things like that. Um, and so one summer we went on one of my parents' journeys with their photography business and we came back and my gym was closed. And so that then made another change of like, okay, do we want to find another gym for me to be able to continue this on? Or do we want to go back to dance? or Do you want to try something else? It's like, you know what? I'll try dance again. We'll go back to that. And I did and got on the, um, the ballet team with that. Um, we did the Nutcracker. We did a lot of competitions, um, got to travel with that. And that was a lot of fun that reignited my love for dance. And at that point, then I was able to put like gymnastics and tumbling into dance and got more creative with that. And then I met a few friends that were involved in the theater world, um, had no clue really what that was and was able to go to an audition and was cast in my very first show, which was Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Now, how old were you when that happened? Eleven. Eleven. Yes. And so you, at that point, you had been dancing like nine or ten years, mm -hmm. literally. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um. Yes. And I was kids chorus number like 12 because there were so many of us. Um. And it was a that really sparked or I was bit by the theater bug, as people say, at that point. And that then put a... a another question up of like, okay, do you want to dive into theater? Do you want to stay on the dance team? Because dance team schedules are really hard. Um, and you're there strenuous hours in the evening and it kind of conflicts with your theater rehearsals. So I kind of chose my the theater that I was working with um, or studying under how to dance program that they developed. And you're only dancing once a week, but I then was able to dance in shows if I was cast. So I was like, we're gonna go this route for a little while. And I did, and um, it was very rewarding. Learned all about musical theater, got to study under multiple people um, that were brought in from Broadway. And just, wow. it was a great, it was a great learning experience to grow up and be a part of that. Okay. Yeah. Then what? And then um, graduated high school. Um, and you're like an expert by the time you leave high school, right? <laughs> Literally, you're an expert in all this stuff. I didn't feel so. like it, and I still don't feel like it. Um, so I graduated, and I had no clue what I wanted to do, believe it or not. <laughs> I knew I wanted to dance, but I there are multiple routes in the dance world of like, do you want to go into concert world? Do you want to go into theater and Broadway? Do you want to go stick with ballet? And if you're a ballerina, then like, where are you going to go with that? Um, so I took a gap year and figured out what exactly I wanted to do. And I, in that time, I studied point and ballet work with a private coach and just to really build my muscles up. Cause I, since I chose theater, I did lose a lot of that um, strength training. Mm -hmm. And um, then after a year, I moved to New York and was accepted to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, also known as AMDA. Um, and that moved me up to New York and I was there for about three and a half years and I studied with AMDA for a year. I did my first and second semester and then I transferred over to um, Broadway Dance Center and finished out in their training program. Wow. Yeah. Now, how did you get to Branson from there? <laughs> um, that is a funny question. And I, New York is a lot it weighs on you and it's not it, like branson it is not like branson um and i miss my family and mm. at that point my sister had brought us here um or brought my family here because it's just my sister and i for kids and we uh she works at the hospital here and my family or my parents were like we don't like this empty nesting syndrome so we would rather be close to one child and it was easier to move to branson than it was to new york mm. So they followed her and they were here. Um, and I really wanted to be home for Christmas in December, 2017 and came here and have been here ever since. There we I go. put my stuff in a storage unit. It was like, I'll be back in six to eight weeks. Got out of their plans and I'm still here. <laughs> that so. is so cool. So really family kind of brought you here first. Here. And then you're like, okay, now what I do, right? Yes. Um, and I literally, I was very much so, I'm only here for six weeks. I'm just here for vacation. Like this is not, this mm. is just to rekindle myself. I'm not going to be here long. And then my sister found an audition for Branson Regional Arts Council's first production of Annie when they 
worked with the Owens Theater. Um, and she was like, ooh, I really want to go audition. She also did theater with me growing up. She's like, I just want to go do this. It'll be fun. And I was like, that's fine. You go do that. I'm not doing it. And she had just broken her foot. And she's like, well, I, I, I want you to at least come with me. And then I ended up going and I ended up auditioning. I got cast <laughs> and that was that. Um, oh my gosh, that's yeah, great. So that was my start there. Yeah. And so you helped out at the school, the high school on their dance team and you've done different things. And then, mm -hmm. so now how long have you been back in the, what I'd call the show business? Um, I, well, I started with King's Castle in 2018, Christmas, and then I um, came back to the castle in 2020 when we started Anthems of Rock. So okay. really since then. Yeah. So folks, this, this to me is a perfect example that someone ha that has really trained in a ton, literally a ton before even coming to Branson mm -hmm. and you're young. Yeah. So once again, another young Branson entertainer that just kind of came to Branson, like that wasn't <laughs> on your radar. It was not at all. It was but not now at you're all. here yes. and you love it, right? Yeah. You wouldn't say no anyway, right? Not on a TV <laughs> show, but, but it's, it's a place where families can be together, but also people can entertain. Absolutely. So, okay, we're gonna be back in just a second. We're gonna talk about all these shows she's in, so hang tight. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. We're here with Kristen Dasto, who is with King's Castle, and she is an extraordinary dancer. <laughs> and if you watch the first half of this episode, you know she's like, you really literally trained your whole life for this. And in fact, we were we were talking, she didn't mention this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now, <laughs> but she, like you've been in a Rockettes program as well. Yes. And so, like the Rockettes are amazing also. So. Tell people about all these different shows that you're in over at King's Castle. Yeah, so we have four, technically five, amazing shows at the castle. Um, we have New Jersey Nights, which is about Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. If you love that music, it's super fun, super cute. Um, we have Dublin's Irish Tenors and the Celtic Ladies featuring Spirit of the Dance. And that is all of your favorite Irish classics. We touch on a little bit of opera, a little bit of swing, super fun. Um, we have the ultimate 70s show, um, get your groove on, shake your yeah. groove thing with us, super fun disco party. And then we also have anthems of rock, which is the biggest rock party in Branson and so much fun. We love it. And so yeah. you're, you're dancing in all of these, yes. right? And so I'm just always amazed, like you got to memorize a lot of stuff. <laughs> and so not only do you have to memorize a lot of stuff in one show, but yes. you got to memorize a lot of stuff in, how do you do that? Um, honestly, a lot of note taking. And then when you have reblocks, so if someone gets a little injured or someone's sick and you go into a different track and you fill in, it kind of helps solidify a little bit more so then you learn more of the show, but a lot, a lot of notes and a lot of practicing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think people realize like how much you have to know. It's almost a science in all honesty. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, it just blows me away. Like how do they remember where to go? Now yes. I'm guessing once you do it many, many times, it becomes almost like Second nature. Second second nature yes. to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, from that standpoint. So do you have a show that is your favorite show? <laughs> Anthems of Rock. Anthems 100%, of Rock. 100%, yes. Okay. Yeah. And that is simply because that is my starting main season show. I did Christmas um, Wonderland in 2018. And then when Anthems of Rock became a thing and they were auditioning for it, I reached out and auditioned for it. Um, and then was a part of the inaugural cast. And that is a type of special that I've never been able to be a part of like that. Yeah. So I got to help create a track and then that show went to Myrtle Beach and then went to a little tour in Canada. And so someone else was doing my track. So then that's, it's a really cool and special experience to have. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Um, so you, 
were we we had mentioned earlier that you were with the Branson Regional Arts Council. Mm -hmm. You are also the director of dance for the the head dance coach here for the Branson High School. Yes. So and you did that for a while. You're not doing mm -hmm. that now, Correct. but under your leadership, like they did some amazing stuff. Yeah. So I was hired um, to take the girls to competition, and that was a huge step up for me as well. Be like, okay. Got to make sure my choreography is spot on. There are a lot of rules to follow when it comes to Missouri State uh, to make sure everyone is safe as well. So it was a lot of pressure, but we went to Sugar Bears um, qualifying competition for four years and or three years in a row. And each year we qualified for state and then we placed anywhere between fifth to yeah. second all three years. Yeah. I think you're, you're one of the few dancers I've actually had on the show, and which I think is great. I mean, we need more <laughs> dancers on the show, but sometimes they're hard to reach. But like, do you have a favorite style of dance? Uh, is it, cause I'm guessing, I know there's different styles, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, mm. Really precision jazz is like, that speaks to my soul and Fosse. Um, anything very stylistic like that is right up my alley. But here recently, commercial jazz has also touched me and I'm like, ooh, mm. I want to learn more. Now, are that. you doing any of that in the show or is that just something you like on the side? Something I like, Dan, um, Ultimate 70s Show has, a lot of jazz in it and it's very dancey in that style and then i would say anthems of rock is the most commercial that i've ever done um so kind of mm -hmm. kind of touching on that but learning through classes and things like that that i can do online while also here has been able to expand that for me yeah now do you come out after the show um occasionally we don't as much anymore okay. um but we can occasionally yeah okay so folks you just have to check and see if you can see her after the show do you sign autographs if you come out if we come out yes. and take pictures yes okay absolutely. so sometimes with covid that some has changed a little bit but yeah. some folks do it sometimes and sometimes they don't now I, here's the deal i am not going to ask you all the times on the show schedules because i think that would be almost impossible <laughs> because there's so much to remember there's but so we're going to tell people how to get to that later absolutely. so but let's tell people once again what shows you're in where it's at and how they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So I am at King's Castle Theater, which is right across from the Big Octopus on the Strip. Um, and that you can catch me in New Jersey Nights, Dublin's Irish Tenors and the Celtic Ladies, The Ultimate 70s Show, and Anthems of Rock. There we go. Folks, we'll be back in just a second to wrap the show up. There are so many things to do in Branson. You need help planning and booking all your fun. You need iBranson.com. You can find everything Branson has to offer from your computer, tablet, or cell phone. You can even buy tickets online or talk to one of their friendly Branson travel specialists. There's no sales pitches, no delivery fees, no service fees, and no waiting. It's fast and easy. Find your fun at iBranson.com. Do it all online or call 877-ENTERTAIN. That's 877-368-3782. iBranson.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Play Branson. We're wrapping the show up today. Thanks for watching. Our guest this week was Kristen Dosto from King's Castle. They have a variety of shows over at King's Castle. The Ultimate 70s Show, New Jersey Nights, which is the music of Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, the Dublin, Dublin's Irish Tenors and the Celtic Ladies, Branson's Christmas Wonderland in November and December, and Anthems of Rock. Now, those shows you can find typically at 10, 2, or 8, and um, just depends on the day and the time, but the, the, that theater is always going. The theater is located right in the center of 76 Country Music Boulevard, across from the aquarium on the boardwalk in Dairy Queen. So be sure to check them out. If you want complete show schedules, you can go to ibranson.com. Next week's artist is Leona Williams over at the Nashville Roadhouse Live Theater, and she is part of the Grand Ladies of Country Music. And so I'm so excited to have her on the show. It'll be her first time on the show. She's really amazing background in history. I want to give you guys some updates on what is coming up here in the area. Uh, we have the Oak Ridge Boys. They're going to be playing numerous dates over at the Mansion Theater. That starts September 20th and 21st, followed by Jimmy Fortune on September 21st, Gene Watson on September 22nd. We have the Grand Ladies of Country at September 22nd and 23rd. And then we go into October. October is a busy month with a lot of special events happening here in town. First of all, we have Larry's Country Diner, October 2nd through the 6th over at Clay Cooper's Theater. 
We have the Texas Tenors there, Gene Watson, Rhonda Vincent, the Malpras brothers, and the Isaacs. October 4th and 5th, the Oak Ridge Boys are back in town, followed by October 5th, Jimmy Fortune. October 6th and 8th, the Women of Joy event featuring Danny Gokey. October 11th and 12th, Oak Ridge Boys are back in town, and October 12th, Jimmy Fortune. October 13th, Ricky Skaggs comes back to town. It'll be great to have him here at the Clay Cooper Theater. October 14th, the Gatlin Brothers make a return trip. October 18th and 19th, the Oak Ridge Boys, followed by Jimmy Fortune on the 19th. The Bellany Brothers make an appearance on October 20th, and Gene Watson comes back on October 21st. October 23rd and 25th, we have the Praise Fest Fall Retreat. Tons of Southern Gospel over at the Mansion Theater. And then there's going to be an Isaacs concert on October 25th. Jimmy Fortune back on October 26th. The Oak Ridge Boys, October 26th and 27th. The Grand Ladies of Country, October 27th and 28th. And Paul Harris and the Claverleys wrap October up on October 28th here in Branson. So... If you need help figuring out where they're going to be, when, or if you need just help planning your next Branson vacation, go to ibranson.com or call 1-877-ENTERTAIN. Those folks can help you out. Thanks for watching Play Branson, and we'll see you next week on Play Branson.